Russian troops recently made another attempt to launch an offensive in the Kursk region. The offensive quickly petered out and part of the advancing forces found themselves surrounded. Russian Z War correspondent Yuri Podolyaka spoke about this. According to Podolyaka, part of the Russian forces from the 810th Brigade managed to break through to the south through the settlement of Pogrebki during the offensive. That's where the group got stuck, surrounded by the Ukrainian defense forces. The enemy is gradually neutralizing the threats that have emerged due to the breakthrough of the 810th Brigade column through the settlement of Pogrebki to the south. Those of our units that were disembarked from the armor in several places have taken up a circular defense. No one can break through to them yet, the Z War correspondent said. According to him, all the settlements in the Kursk region, the liberation of which the propaganda began to talk about on the first day of the offensive, have been returned under the control of the Ukrainian armed forces. Podolyaka also reported that Russian troops were bogged down in the area of the Novoivanovka and Dar Eno. The advance there was stopped on the first day. The new Russian counter-offensive certainly cannot be called successful. Podolyaka complained. It should be noted that according to Russian media, the Kremlin ordered the command to completely drive the Ukrainian armed forces out of the Kursk region by the new year. Russian dictator Vladimir Putin allegedly does not want to start peace talks with Ukraine while it still holds this trump card. Russian troops are trying to advance in the Kursk region. Ukraine's top commander said, adding that Moscow has amassed tens of thousands of soldiers in the region that borders Ukraine. Following the order of their military leadership, they are trying to dislodge our troops and advance deep into the territory we control. General Alexander Sirsky, the top commander of Kiev's forces, wrote on the Telegram messaging app. Ukrainian troops launched an incursion into Russia's border Kursk region in August, taking a number of settlements under control in the first such deployment into the Russian territory since Moscow launched its full-scale invasion on Ukraine in February 2022. The senior advisor to President-elect Donald Trump said that the new administration will focus on achieving peace in Ukraine and not on giving Ukraine the opportunity to return the territories occupied by Russia. Brian Lanza, the strategist of the Republican Party, told the BBC that the Trump administration will ask the president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, to present his version of the realistic vision of the world. And if President Zelensky sits down at the negotiating table and says that we can have peace only if we have Crimea, he will show us that he is not serious, he said. The president-elect constantly declares that his priority is ending the war and stopping what he describes as the leakage of U.S. resources in the form of military aid to Ukraine. Mr. Lanza, Trump's political adviser since his 2016 election campaign, said that the return of Crimea is unrealistic and not the goal of the United States. When Zelensky says that we will end these hostilities, that peace will come only after the return of Crimea, we have news for President Zelensky, there is no more Crimea, he said in the BBC World Service weekend program. And if the return of Crimea is a priority for you, and American soldiers must fight for the return of Crimea, then you are on your own. The USA has never sent American soldiers to fight in Ukraine, and Kiev has not asked American troops to fight on its behalf. Ukraine requested American military aid only to arm its soldiers. Opponents of Trump from the Democratic Party accuse him of rapprochement with the President of Russia, Vladimir Putin, and say that his approach to war is tantamount to the surrender of Ukraine, which will threaten the whole of Europe. A recent failed Russian assault northeast of Sivesk, near Bilohorivka, prompted outrage from some Russian ultra-nationalist mill bloggers over Russian command failures and the pervasive Russian military culture of exaggerating battlefield successes. Russian z -War correspondents are already blaming the Russian Defense Ministry command for this, which allowed major losses during the offensive in the Bilohorivka area. Russian war correspondents claim that the commander of the 123rd Motorized Brigade gave the order to the 1st, 2nd and 3rd Motorized Battalions as well as the 4th Tank Battalion to conduct a frontal attack on the Ukrainian Armed Forces positions in the Bilohorivka area. 
ISW analysts gave a description of those events. The offensive was launched on November the 2nd, when the enemy, without adequate fire support, advanced on the positions of Ukrainian forces. Z-War correspondents emphasized that the offensive itself was not only unsuccessful, but also led to large losses in both personnel and military equipment. Russian war correspondents have once again repeated their criticism that the main thing for the command is to create beautiful reports for the Russian Ministry of Defense attaching to them false maps with achievements on the battlefield. Field commanders send false reports to the Russian Ministry of Defense in order to secure promotions at the expense of the lives of Russian military personnel. The Russian Ministry of Defense had claimed in late October 2024 that Russian forces had seized Serebrianka just west of Bilohorivka and Russian mill bloggers may have been referring to this claim in their critiques. Bilohorivka is a particular sore spot for the Russian ultranationalist community because Russian forces have impaled themselves on assaults to take the settlement since at least May 2022. The Russian military command most notably launched a catastrophic river crossing to take Bilohorivka in May 2022 that failed resulting in significant Russian armored vehicle losses. ISW recently observed elements of the 5th Motorized Rifle Brigade fighting in the Kurakov direction. A Russian mill blogger claimed that Russian deputy commander of the sniper platoon of the 88th Hispaniola Volunteer Brigade, Pavel Alexandrovich Apalkov, nicknamed Joker, was killed in combat in the Chasiv Yar direction. The newly elected U.S. President Donald Trump is already shaping the country's policy on the main directions, Ukraine and Israel. This was reported by Bloomberg. With phone calls to the leaders of both nations, and another expected with Russian President Vladimir Putin, Trump's victory, and the possibility he will seek major policy changes, is reverberating in both countries and well beyond. One former Trump administration official, who asked not to be identified discussing private assessments, said the president-elect will have an immediate head start thanks to the perception that he will be tougher than his predecessor. U.S. adversaries may change their behavior in advance, the person said, some deterred by the threat of U.S. retaliation, and others seeking to exploit their remaining leverage before President Joe Biden leaves office. That's being felt most acutely in Ukraine. Trump promised during the campaign to solve the Ukraine crisis before Inauguration Day, and President Volodymyr Zelensky is already scrambling to catch up. Tesla CEO and Trump supporter Elon Musk was in the room for Zelensky's call with Trump this week, according to a person familiar with the matter. Musk has previously advocated for a negotiated solution in which Ukraine gives up some of its territory. Trump's election has changed the Ukrainian rhetoric and planning in their views about negotiations, said Shelby Majid, deputy director of the Atlantic Council's Eurasia Center. Majid said Ukraine is moving in the direction, knowing that Trump has won, of accepting that negotiations are a reality. A former Trump administration official told the publication that the elected president will benefit from the perception that he will be tougher than his predecessor. According to the publication, the authorities of this country are beginning to realize the inevitability of negotiations. Trump is expected to pursue a policy of reluctance in the fight for territories occupied by Russia. Israel, however, will benefit the most from Trump's presidency. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is a longtime ally of Trump. Trump has already publicly stated that he will give Israel more freedom to prepare possible strikes on Iran especially if Tehran decides to change its nuclear concept, the publication noted. The fact of an electoral result is itself reassuring for some countries, which were preparing for either outcome but unable or unwilling to move forward without knowing who would lead the US and in what direction.